Aqua. Which gets placed onto the enemy when he dies. Navi might be killing him a hell of a lot. And that's going to really restrict the Mirana. She doesn't really no normally have a lot of damage to start with. So if they do put Dendi on that Mirana, he needs to build into some remain. damage healing items, which makes me feel like they're probably going to push a Vost. I know it's, it's a lot to take remain. into consideration. Like if, if we're saying, hey, because Moran has been picked up and a base damage is quite low, that we're probably going to be looking at like, oh, I carry Mirana. So she could get enough farm to have enough items to make up for the lack of damage which removed from the Vengeful Aura. It's only the early stages where that's really affected. It's the later portion of the game when you normally would be getting, getting enough items that you're fine. But if now you want to pack a punch in the early stages around that eight to nine minute when the bat rider can get himself a blink dagger, they're going to need something more. And uh, that's a little pick. bit more. The Wraith King, the hottest kid on the block of late. It's going to be the Wraith King kicking in. The man who makes aggro tri lanes work. I'm looking forward to seeing if it can work and this time around with a Wraith King as well as a Mirana this may just answer the solution you're going up against a VS and an SD but at the same time it doesn't really matter like if you're gonna disrupt then the Mirana arrow will connect if you're throwing the Hellfire Blast Ten and you disrupt to a Vador to protect the unit that's stunned up then Five you're still able to follow remaining. through all you basically need then is uh, I would say another Nuka or another another controlling Reserve hero time. with both the Wraith King you could Slark. actually go into the Visage in this game as well. With a Slark Navi's on the field, they may pick. think of something else. Like the Bane and Puck already removed out the one Silence hero as well as the other controlling hero. If he's able to get the, the uh, Fiend's Grip off before the Dark Pact is used, then you'd have a chance. If the Dark Pact does tr trigger, then you're just going to be like hitting yourself because you can't use your ultimate properly. The Slark is definitely a problem. They need to have some good silences up against him. And that's why normally you, you consider the Doom. And you can still do that. Like, you could run a safe lane Doom up against the Centaur. Crystal it could be a rough lane at the very start for him, but I think that'll still Radiant be okay. Or we actually back. do get ourselves a, a controlling support hero, but a little bit more of a defensive one. So because of this, I'm inclining, uh, inclining myself to believe that that's a Batrider off lane, a Marana in the middle, and then a Wraith King core uh, to be played up by Havorce. Then Crystal remaining. Maiden, Puppy, he always takes up that role. And then it'll be plus remaining. one for Navi to grab on this one, which then could be like the Visage. But I'm still missing my silencing hero, which puts a question mark still there because Slark is like, a wonderful pickup for Dream Team. As long as they Ten can find some remaining. decent early farm on him, it's either that or they're looking to get some early kills. Five but the synergy remaining. between the SD as well as the Slark isn't that amazing. You can disrupt and then you keep him in close, so then you can get the leash up at least. But Navi's normally when you're jumping in for the pounce and the leash, you want to catch him off guard. So before the before like the support can come in and save the hero that's being initiated on, Slark's able to pick him off. And the SD disruption just buys that extra time for the supports to come in. So yeah, I'm... Ten seconds remaining. I'm going to be skeptical about it to see if, if the lane could work, if it is meant to be a tri lane from, from Dream Team. Remaining. Of course, it could just be the SD and Centaur. Disruption into Hofstop. Now, that's a combo which works. Reserve then time. with the double edge and the VS stun, that's very different to the Slark. You could almost run the Slark as a safe lane on the bottom uh, as a solo. Easiest way to do it. And Viper, the final pick. ban out. So they're thinking about the middle lane now. Could have also been the safe if you're going to run Slark in towards the mid. This line from Dream Team. Okay, it was actually going to be last, uh, the mid hero. Then again, now we now we're looking at two different types of uh, of combos with the SD. Both the Kunker Torrent plus the Centaur Hoof Stomp, both work beautifully with the, with the SD disruption. We may just be SD and VS rotating around trying to find kills and influence the balance of power in those lanes. It can be very, very effective. At the same time, Ten you're still running into a Wraith remaining. King. Templar so you think assassin. you can actually get the kill there? Templar Assassin. So we actually get Dendi's here. the last one. Support Wraith King then. And that'll be played in this game. They can either go aggro or they can stay defensive. It depends if they feel like they need to dodge. The Bat Rider's going to have a real rough time, though, if he has both SD as well as Centaur against him. And if there's a VS in that mix-up, you can basically kiss your Bat Rider goodbye the second he's called out of position. So the safer thing for Na'Vi would be just push, push the Bat Rider towards the offlane. If things go really bad, uh, just bring him back into the Nightside Jungle, where you could have Wraith King or Crystal Maiden prepare a couple of stacks. Crystal Maiden's already...
Probably gonna be looking for a little bit of farm herself using the frostbite just to do that power leveling inside the jungle. So it wouldn't take too much just to stack up the extra camps while she's doing such a thing. Prepare but for now, for we're gonna watch Navi move aggressively down to the bottom lane. At the same time, you watch Dream Team move north. So it looks like they're how many how many wards are we coming out with? We got observers and sentries in the hands for DT. Well, Na'Vi are only walking around with one set of observers. So, Na'Vi, this doesn't look like they're going to try and run an aggro tri lane. Because if they... Actually, you know, they don't have to worry about that. Because it's a VS and an SD. There's no real creep clearing potential to come out from Dream Time. Uh, uh, dream Team. No, why well, I keep saying Dream Time? Mm, got it in my head after we did the typo. Uh, yeah, but after Dream Team. Like, they, they can clear with a Kunkka. One, they, one way they could do it, and they could double edge, but that's more like a little bit more flash farming than anything else. 30 seconds to battle. So there's no reason for them to do much more apart from this. That's a block ward to block up these two camps, so it's not an easy stack. And this does mean that we're looking at a defensive lane from Navi. Koro, actually, what is he doing? He's hovering around with a Vorst on this off lane. He's gonna have to move up north to help out Funnick in a moment. Puppy's also coming up, and they want to check for the runes. They would have spotted that ward going down by 168. The battle begins. They just want to see what runes will spawn up, and that's probably another reason why Koro is down here. So bottom rune is a haste rune, and Koro, well, okay, he didn't want to leave that to Afterlife, but at the same time, Afterlife's running in with boots. He was going to beat him on the hoof race anyway. Haste. So he's just waiting for the right time to add a little bit of harassment. Maybe looking over towards a Vorst here on the bottom lane. The mid matchup will be uh, Nubik as the uh, Kunker going up against Dendi, and Puppy is actually here from level one. I want you to stay here for long, though. I think he's only here just in case there was going to be the SD and the Kunker together, because that would have caused a lot of problems. But right now, the SD's up on the top lane, and they're looking for that kill. Funnick just instantly goes into Firefly. And he does he does the wise choice here. Sticky Napalm is what you normally want, the early levels, because then you've got some level of Radiant's control or influence over your lane. Attack. This game, you, you can't nothing. really do that. If you, if you try and do that, then... Uh, oh, actually, you do. Already oh having yourself some, some trouble. The pull down, he had to do something about it. Yeah, but he, he needs to have the Sticky Napalm, so he's got some kind of control. But the Firefly, at least he can evade the control against the Flying Vision, so he's kind of good to go. Kuro wants to move up towards this top lane, but he's going to need help from Puppy. But Puppy's busy trying to find his second level. Like, he's already gone into the jungle now. Looks like he's actually ended up using uh, two different Frostbites and unable to get the entire camp down, and not a lot of experience to his name either really needs that aura so he can get that double regeneration in for himself so he can keep doing this without having to like run through the clarities which is what he's doing right now Off. and having Kuro as the only one up on the top lane with the hellfire blast I suppose at least he's got one nice thing I believe he can fit through that path in this little like this little narrow point right here <laughs> so he does have a, have a follow-up stun in case things get a little bit messy but DT are already on the move rotating in the SD towards middle lane currently that lane it's pretty even, 5-6 up against 4-5. So there's nothing really much to write home about that one until this happens. So it's the zone out. You got one point up in Torrent, two points up in the Tiebringer. Pop is already able to steal the Invis room, which is going to be very, very useful for him. Of course, Dandy was probably hoping to have that inside of his body, uh, a bottle. It means Puppy at least can help on that lane. While Kuro, he's deep in, he's actually inside this top lane now. Weird to see this build coming out, even though it is natural one for the Wraith King. Been seeing it all morning, as far as the Wraith King goes, where we ended up having the four points up in the Hellfire Blast, and then the uh, two points up in Crit before he ended up getting, and of course the ultimate, uh, before he ended up getting his points up in, uh, in, in Vampiric Aura. But 168, wow, that's a lot of DPS coming out. Puppy held him there a long time. The attack misses up the hill. That would have been a guaranteed first blood for Dendi if he was able to hit. This chance kicks in, and SD will get lucky and survive through that. DT's initiation to start, that started all that off. They weren't ready for the Frostbite to come out from the Crystal Maiden, expecting that much damage to come away of the Shadow Demon. But now they do actually claim the first blood in middle lane. Shadow Demon, Disruption, Catcher, Torrent, Tiebringer, the whole shebang while up on top lane, which is where I thought they were going to try and go for a kill. It's over on PGG. Kuro sticking with him, with the Vampiric Aura, PGG locked into a corner. Needs one more hit, and they're going to give it over to Funnick to make sure he gets extra money and work his way towards having that Blink Dagger. 
still remain uh, kill. <laughs> First blood missing free. Is, is that a way you can do it? Two and a half weeks I'm currently on, people. It's two and a half weeks. I don't want the streak to end. Catching the tail into that one. We should probably look towards our offlane. Something we haven't even I haven't even touched on at all. 17-6 up against the 11 2 now, normally, you wouldn't think, like, a Marana would have, uh, like, a fantastic time here, because he wouldn't really burn through much of the Centaur's life. He's a very, very tanky kind of guy, especially when he buys up a stout shield. And you've also always got to be very mindful about that return. Looks like Dendi's having more fun. I'm actually going to turn on Nubik here. The Meld Attack was still there for Dendi, but he didn't want to release it out. He's definitely considering throwing towards the Conqueror. I think he realizes it's just not enough damage. Until Puppy has the Nova, they don't have enough uh, movement control to allow Danny to really make the most out of that negative armor hit. Yeah, but on this bottom lane, Havorce going into phase boots. He's going to start to dish out a little bit more damage, but at the same time... Okay, PGG. <laughs> Funny, is just lighting him on fire. We can get the third napalm stack off, but now we'll be able to. One charge is through, come on from PGG, but one more attack from Funny, and he's able to pick you up yet again another kill. Looks like he's got himself a nice gift they coming out so in the courier, or... Actually, no, that's just his bottle, which he picked up. And Kuro goes man fighting up against this Lark. Not the greatest situation in the world for Kuro until he gets that level 6, at which point it's the perfect situation. Slark blows everything to kill him off, and Kuro just has his ulti go on cooldown. The Slark burns with mana early on, it's okay. Disruption, gonna go in with a Torrent. Refraction protected him from the initial danger, and now Funny comes in. Sticky Napalm to go again with the Firefly there. He's actually managed to separate Nubik from his support hero. And this is not, he wa not what he wants to have happen. Tries to run higher ground and just waste a little bit more time. Batrider now with his third kill in the game. Sitting at 1,200 gold after purchasing bottle five minutes in. I was calling eight minutes for the Blink Dagger to arrive. That was mainly with uh, with eight, with Stack Farm as well. He's actually already got a semi-stack here. It's just a double. Danny's having to run out. The poison was really doing some serious work Dyer's here. He's trying to keep the stacks going, but attack. Moonline Shadow will allow him, to, as well as Kuro, to escape. <laughs> Look up towards my top bar, and Kuro's got basically no life whatsoever, so the perfect time in the Moonline Shadow, and now they're going to go for a count initiation on bottom lane. Frostbite up, arrow to follow up. The Nova has already gone out with the extra Starfall. Afterlife actually gets himself a good hook stop, follows up with the ulti, and then double edges. You move like a blue will get the glacier. last hit, so nice levels for Poppy, but they lose their, they lose her Vost. That every single player for Navi is below 50% of their life points until finally Danny is able to use his bottle charges. But SD doesn't make that any easier attack. for him, but the Invis rune will. When it goes into the finally finish up this stack, so as though he's got three kills and now it's up to 22 CS, six minutes into the game. Sits at a net worth of 2.8k, looking very, very nice. It'll be a lot, it'll be a lot worse for DT if they didn't get that kill on a Vorst. Mental oh, was able to get no. that kill before he was brought down. As in, like, it wasn't the follow-up damage after death, so he does grab the experience for that. Which is what makes it worthwhile. Up to level 7.5, almost a full level over the top of Vorst. Puppy also, they just gave the uh, Crystal Maiden level 6, which means you get the 3 points up in the aura, which means there's a huge amount of mana to just keep doing things yes. like this. Hellfire Blast! into the arrow, Frost fight to make sure he stays there. Nova will be committed as well in the Centaur this time around. Won't be able to get that stomp into a combo. While in middle lane, Dendi, the boat's being brought in. Wow, that's a really big signal they, they found that in. But Dendi will be able to evade. Put down the sentry wall, it's just because they know he's been triggered the Invis and they won't know where he's moving in. While Navi, the lost as well as Kuro, will just do some creep skipping out. Just to make sure this tier 1 tower is able to take a considerable amount of damage, but it's all being offset by the damage being pumped in by DT. We're going again, middle lane. Disruption. No mana for a catcher. Now there is, because he used the stick charges. Dendi, he's got melt, and he's actually out attack. of range of the sentry ward. The problem is there was still poison. Centaur triggered the ulti then. So make sure they're able to chase down Dendi. So the Centaur ulti back on, call, uh, back on cooldown. Dyer's top tower is Also, we'll take the bottom tower as the Templar Assassin dies. So the injection of money is still there for Na'Vi. And DT haven't finished their work on that tier 1 tower at the top. And this at the same time as 8 minutes in, the Blink Dagger will arrive for the Bat Rider. And he's still got a little bit more farm to do. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. All this is going on, he's running his bottle charges. He's still getting that nice little level 3 aura coming out from Puppy. May not mean much because you're not seeing like Dyer's burst mana regeneration, but it really does help over time Dyer's when you're throwing out 20 mana for every napalm. Now, Blink Dagger, hello, ZXC. 
Thought he was going to get him someone, but now he doesn't actually know. The Firefly is out, but... It is actually out. He ran out of time Dyer's for it. But the Moonline Shadow attack. was also used to protect him. I don't know if uh, Funnick is really considering defending this top tower, if he thought he can get a Denial in and then escape himself out. And Navi has still got a search Radiant's for a trade. They push three into the bottom attack. lane. Dandy is currently farming up inside the jungle, trying to get to the hand of Myers. The tier one tower Dyer's is toast. If Funnick stay close, he would just sacrifice his own life. Blink dagger or not, he doesn't have the life points to survive that. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Or the tank ability to really Radiant's survive it either. Bottom tower is under attack. Radiant structures This is now the fortified. tier two tower. Oh, the slug. If he comes in Dyer's with dark pack, yeah, he came in with dark pack, expecting like arrow or stun. Now the noble will fly out middle lane. There's a little bit of trouble. Dendi will go down. Funnick was here trying to protect him. Did some decent damage being dealt out to the SD. But again, Templar Assassin push, pushing up the daisy. That's zero for three now on Dendi. But the trade off is coming on the bottom lane. A tier one and a tier two tower. In. Radiance from their own jungle has fallen. That's the important trade that Navi was searching for. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Afterlife. Oh, this could be a bad time. Oh, that VS. VGG. Almost getting nailed by the arrow. If it was only a microsecond earlier from a force, he would have actually connected then too. As you can see, the, fo the fog line, it was here. That arrow would have come out of nowhere as they were running down. Like, that's the current one, and that's actually from the Dyer Observer Ward, but they were moving down this direction, so they couldn't see. In fact, the fog line probably would have been a little bit closer to us here. The angle they were running in. Oh, looks like Puppy's able to haste. save a haste room, but well, okay, there's not much point. Then he's on the wrong side of the map right now. And he's still trying to get to that hand of minus of his. Centaur's not looking too healthy, but he is getting closer towards that blink dagger, so we're not going to see a completely shut down Centaur in this game. He was able to pick up 28 CS, as well as, of course, that one kill on a Vorse in the bottom lane. Did lose his life because of it, and that meant that he had uh, two deaths to his name after that. Not the greatest centaur you've ever seen. But the Slark's doing a decent job. Ring of Aquila as well as uh, Agility Treasures early on. Another 1,000 gold in his bank account. Pretty decent. Denied. Like a Vorst also just pings out the fact there's a there's a ward watching the Roshan pit. <laughs> just keep mindful of it. Doesn't need to be dewarded straight away. Mindful about this middle lane VS. And that stun is so impossible to land for VS on, against a Vorst. With that leap being able to disjoint any kind of projectile stun. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Never really able to get it. Unless, well, as you know, there's not even an, an unless. You could try and get the torrent, but even then, there's still that split second for the for the leap. Very short split second, but a split second nonetheless. And Murano? Actually with a mithril hammer to start with. I kind of sounded a little bit surprised when I said that. And that's just, in my brain, I thought Desolator. Maelstrom would be the obvious choice. What I thought he was going to do was going to be a BKB in this game. Looks like it's not the case. Puppy does come down now and, and D ward out. She gives the gold over to a Vorse as well, allowing him to have the last hit in the ward. Seemed like much, but it's still 50 gold. Going in on Koro with the cleave. That's already the first stun. The force the follow-up arrow. And then the starfall. He held off but has to leave himself away. Koro, he will die, but now they have to slow up puppy. Just fight to on the only the hook stop will cancel that one. And then the double H slides him through. SD picked up the cool Maiden, Kunker killed off the Mirana, and now Koro will die a second time. With a double kill coming in for the SD. They will take out the tier one tower. And Navi, all their patience. Now it goes out the window and they give three kills for nothing Dyer's over towards DT. Is under attack. DT are a team that can roll with this momentum. They got 2,000 gold over on the Slark. Which means the Shadow Blade can be coming. We've already got the hand of Myers for Dandy. He's trying to build it to Tresh, but they've bottomed him out. No retraction up in time. Now he does get it off. One it comes in. He's actually got himself a lasso. Doing a lot of damage to Dexy as he did come in. PTG will burn inside the Firefly. Which means now the Vengeance Aura, the negative one, is applied over towards the Batrider. Nubik with the Starfall, the extra stun, the and, the, and the Flame Break being thrown Another out by Funny. Trying to keep his distance here, but as you can see, that radius. It's just too far. Radiant's middle He's basically on the other side of the attack. river as he takes the damage away from a Vorst. Still doing it. I don't know if he's knowing that. He's taking 12% of the damage away from a Vorst. Either way, two heroes for the price of one, but again, Dendi. Fourth death to his name without attack. a single kill. 
still sitting at the fifth highest net worth. Would say it's down to the hand of Myers, but I think he's only used one shot on that thing so far. Ladies now disruption. ZXD copped an arrow. The dive pack will let him break free, but there's more than enough stuns, especially the follow one coming in there from, from Kuro. And he will lose his life with the double edge. Takes a lot of damage to Orion to do that. Comes a 1 1 trade. Avorso leaps away. They've already used the ultimate there of the Centaur to keep themselves in this fight. The Puppy with the Nova and the last attack. Able to pick up the Centaur. This Shadow Demon is really working overtime. He's about to be finally claimed up by Funnic. That's a six kill streak right now. Funnic can get it. He needs something more. There's sticky name palms. There's ships flying out. Nubik will dive back inside the lane. And now they may just give it to Dandy. Give him the extra money. Wish they do so. 772 gold from that one. Denny may have only gotten two kills, but it's worth every bit of gold which he has given away with his own deaths now. Inject a huge amount of money into him. They look now towards the tier two tower in the mid. I don't know if they can really do this. They're still up against the Slark, the VS, and the and the uh, blinking centaur is back alive again. There should be Navi for searching for Roshan shortly. Bring in the Wraith King, take the Templar Assassin, and best basically the two of them can do the job. Still got the ultimate of the Crystal Maiden to give them some cover fire from the high ground. And the Bat Rider as well. They may want to wait the extra 30 seconds out here, or 30 seconds until they can actually kill Roshan. How quickly are they doing it? That could be a bad race, especially with the Vorse now who does set the Maelstrom up and running. We'll get through it. DT's not going to get there in time. This won't have to try and get there. Bat Rider, Firefly still on cooldown for another seven seconds. Flame Breaker by in the space, but they've already the got it. So, in the corner, ZXC, he was about to pounce himself in here. She should put a Blink Dagger instead of the Shadow Blade. They need to actually jump on him right now. Dark Pack's been used, which means Blink Dagger, Lasso. Ah, oh, Shadow Dance had to be used then. Remove all the vision for Funny. They forced off him down, though. Hoopstop is too far away. Follow up stun from Kuro. They ensure the kill with Mummy dropping down, letting it go. And they move in towards the SD. Through his six kill streak, he has two deaths to his name. The Moonlight Shadow was giving Navi the cover to go in on DT as well. Radiant's but DT never knew how much they're really attack. going up against, even with the Sentry Ward that was sitting inside the bushes just a little bit further back here. When you have a Sentry Ward like that, you're going to be seeing around the trees as well. Radiant structures are fortified. A little bit easier when Funnick is able to destroy him with a Firefly, but for now, Nana B will take this tier 2 tower in the mid. Radiant's middle tower has Four towers fallen. down the turret. <laughs> Didn't actually cancel a boss, it was just on the edge of his TP. And they trigger the Centaur or did they're looking for the stragglers. Blink away by one. Denny's in the tree line. Invis rune is up and they don't have any detection. <laughs> I think they found him. They thought, wait, wait. Do they think he melted? No. They're going to realize anyway when Denny shows himself in the bottom lane that he is no, he's definitely gone. Denny with the Aegis Simol and the Mithril Hammer up his sleeve. Now that one should be the Desso, which is why we don't get it over on the, tip, on, on the Mirana. Another reason why I paused. Oh, for a moment. He blinked down Funnick with the four staff. He's giving him such confidence to be over aggressive. Probably got the Frostbite off. They could have been looking at a very dead Centaur. He just grouped up as four. They're not sure where to fight. And then again, ZXC knows where to fight up against the force. Wants to leap himself away now, does do so. Movement speed for a force should let him escape this one, even with the pounce coming up. Cool down. It's because they bring in the bat rider. The pounce actually comes in and kills the Piranha. Should have kept running, but then the dive pack breaks free of the last two. But he will not break free of the haste rune. Bat rider while in middle lane. Kuro trying to manhandle this one. He's already used his ultimate. Denny stays in this fight. Disruption will go off on him. Kuro, no mana real. Uh, he got a lot of mana. No life points really to speak of. But Dendi, he's trying to take him away from Nubik. Sticking up with him. The TA trap will go. VS with a stun on Dendi. And the AGC model will trigger out. The VS, he'll get stunned up as well. This one has to be taken by Funnick. In fact, yep, Great King will in fact take it. Dendi comes through. Meld it on one and Puppy. Caught him off with a pass. Four heroes down for DT. Arts life escaping down the middle lane. Could turn lethal. It's now just a rotation up towards top lane. They can't push in through the middle lane in time to dish out damage to the tier three tower. Their only major option is, as far as building can, building battles goes, is uh, top lane. You can take tier one and tier two tower up there. I don't know if that'll be enough money. If a force gets one of the last hits, it would be enough money to get his full me on, uh, full me on you're up and running. Instead of just sitting here with the Maelstrom. Afterlife is a very tempting target. 
<laughs> Puppy. Did he get spotted doing that? Yeah, he did. Tower vision actually comes down that far. So we're spotted him putting down the aggressive observer ward. Radiance top tower. Also being is very under over attack. aggressive in mid. He's now finished the deso, still gonna wait for the crew to go all the, all the way back to base. PGG hoping he can get in rage for a swap. But if he does, he's basically dead. Also likes to do this with a Wraith King. Notice this more and more. Like most uh, Wraith Kings look for that early blink Radiance tag until they got the jump and initiation. Bakura plays in a very <laughs> different manner. Like he doesn't just jump in, he walks in and tanks it all. So we got Drum as well as just the Bracer. He's gone for double Bracer before too, Puppy. Okay, Nubik, he's going to ship out. gonna come and fight for PGG. Sentry oh, ulti has also been triggered. They're trying to come back in and fight this one and they're gonna get it right. Hawks on the catch on two. Kuro's about to be split in half. In fact, he's waiting to split Puppy in half as he throws his ulti down. The Vengeful Spirit actually died on the edge of this with a Batrider funny coming in for the snipe off. So it's two support heroes for the price of one. They're still four staff on Funnick, so they're not going to be able to catch him here. Tower is under attack. Firefly is up through the tree line on the end of his Firefly. Just a four staff it through, actually. But now a Yule Scepter as well. Really good movement speed coming in for Funnick. Not to mention now he finally has himself a bit of a disable. They needed that in case the Slark was initiating on them. Just that pounce off. You just want to send yourself up in the air to save it. And now he also picks up the gem. We'll have a lot more Shadows safety with that gem. Gonna run out of item slots soon. He's gonna drop the bottle, basically give it to a support. Hey, he just sold the bottle. That's one way to do it. Jumping top lane, blink the last two. Dark pack's already been used, so they've got him. Dark pack was on cooldown, which means very Your simple kill. Marana arrow ends. point blank range will take him to the knee. 19-13 now on the board. Definitely not disappointed as far as kills go. And you're not going to be disappointed again. Puffy caught the bottom lane. Excellent so spot. He's going to crossfire it off, but in the middle of a torrent. Okay, that double edge was a little bit of overkill. Uh, it looks like Centaur just doesn't care anyway. One for one trade for the support for a core. That's funny. Okay. A brand spanking new war. Which just gets taken out. Disruption will go, but you'll set her up into the air. And then four star Radiance back down again. Breaks free attack. of any kind of negative buffs. Now Force is also bringing down this top tower. He might want to just kill off the catapult so we can use the creep wave to help him. Because he can't do it all by himself, but that's also the reason attack. why he got support coming in here. Afterlife and Nubik. It's a shadow blade from Nubik coming in. He's gonna X marks here on the Force. Leaps away, but straight back in again. And they slice and dice Funnick. Just considering coming in the death later. Well, that's only from the illusion right there, but they purge the illusion. He may consider turning around this one, especially considering ZXC. Okay, the Dark Pass gonna let him break free of the initial stun by Koro. But Koro able to dodge out that pounce and push ZXC still into the middle of the fire. Disruption will go out to Koro. How long has he got that ult? Six seconds. No wonder he wants to turn into this one. SD, stunned up and then crit it down. This range is gonna run through. He's looking for as well. There's gonna be funny that takes the kill. Not to mention Denny doing a lot of the grunt work on the front lines. That's why I'm here. Now they have the choice. Puppy, uh, Puppy. <laughs> is he trying to solo on ZXC? This is some serious confidence from him. Puppy, I'm not sure about this, man. Let the ulti go. The flame breaks buying in the space. Is he's taking too much damage from this. Even inside the Shadow Dance, they actually get the kill. They force it. Funny gets himself a godlike streak and let the items rain from the heavens. 22 minutes in. Radiance middle tower is under attack. They are taking every single kill. They're taking the advantage. Even though there's still 15 kills over here on DT, it's Navi who control the balls of this game. Lost two towers and they've basically taken seven of DTs and they're about to take the mid ranks as well. With that Desolator on Dendi, they're just able to easily work through this. They've got to finish the job though. Slark is up in 15 seconds time. They're a little bit worried about that. The Hawk's on mid with the Torrent actually going nicely on the Dendi of Kuro. The ship to follow up Kuro. He's going to die here. If he accepts that back, it'll just be the escape mechanism. The question is they want to go back in this. There's a swap from PGG, but then the burst damage from Dendi is more than enough. Lazo is also still battling for Fanic and then Kuro. It's a huge amount of damage going the way of the SC as well as the Kanka. The side blades from Denny was there without initiating in on the Raid King. Now Arm climbs a double kill for Funnick. Down to NXT. A force sitting on the edge. He gets torrented up again. The Navi Korea. No! Ball. But Funnick has himself a triple kill and GG. 23 minutes in. Navi will take the victory. Radiance middle for the Dream Team. Have ourselves a short break as we praise ourselves for match number two here of this two game series between Navi as well as DT. Navi so far, I believe they're actually undefeated in the D2CL. 
Of course, this is only their second game, and they still have a lot of rough matches to come up. Yeah, actually, they've actually got one win and one loss.